Hey guys, it's Mom Marada, and the question was asked, how did my husband get me to call him Lord and Master? And the answer is, he didn't. I wanted to. And, you know, it, we have to go back to the beginning, because when we were both 14 years old, he was always a dominant, assertive, you know, my way or the highway kind of guy. So he's always had my respect. And the way he puts it is, I'm the nicest a-hole you'll ever meet. <laughs> so he's very, you know, firm about whatever it is that he's standing for, um, you know, whatever it is that he believes in or how he wants things. Um, but he's a man of integrity and honor. So, you know, he's like, hey, listen, if I tell you this is what it is, then that's what it is. Don't question me, you know, and if you don't like it, there's the door. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, he just has always had a confidence in himself and he would tease like if I said oh god he'd say yes you know I'm right here and I was like oh my goodness you know so he'd always tease me like that and just kind of you know had that very assertive and even yes god like now he's playing with his bone sorry <laughs> um you know attitude you know or demeanor that he would present to me and um you know, I loved it and I still do. And as time went on, you know, he just, he earned so much respect for me, so much honor and reverence for me. Um, the way that he's led our family, the way that he's led me, the way he's taken care of me, the way that he's guided me, um, corrected me, helped me to change things that were actually would have hurt myself, um, or hurt our family. And, um, you know, provided again, he pays the cost to be the boss. He has worked his butt off uh, from the beginning, making 28,000 to making six figures the last so many years, um, you know, and so he's provided a life for me that is such a blessing and I, I can't help but be like, wow, you know, you are my Lord, you are my master, you are my king, this is your castle. And, you know, I'm grateful that he wants me to be his queen. But when I, started going to church because I didn't grow up in the church. Um, my mom's East Indian. And uh, so we were in temples and stuff. So that's cool as far as like understanding we're not this body, you know, we're a spirit soul and you know, we don't belong here and all that kind of stuff is very cool. Um, but as far as learning families and, and the structure and the order and you know, how to get along in married life, I was lost. Um, I learned a lot from reading books, old books, old movies, things like that. Um, so anywho, but when I found church, thanks to my friend, God bless her, I tell her I owe her forever. Um, they are a non-denominational, full gospel, interracial, international church. <laughs> uh, wonderful. I just posted a picture of my pastor and first lady have been married 43 years now. God bless them. And, um, you know, he taught and still teaches the unadulterated truth. And so he wasn't afraid to teach women. This is what Sarah called her husband, Lord and master, you know, and it says in first Peter chapter three, um, you are her daughters. If you will do like she did, you know, without any fear or trembling or amazement, um, you know, it's a couple of them paraphrasing, but that's the, the gist of it. And so I really liked that. I was like, yeah, you know what? And then between that and the story of Esther and the way that she talked to, of course, her husband was the king. But the idea was that the way she treated her king, the queen treated the king, would trickle down to the common wives and husbands in their relationships, which is why Vashti was, it was such a no-no what she did. Because they said that because she wouldn't listen to the king and treated him with contempt, the everyday wife was going to treat her husband with contempt, okay? So the positive opposite you know is true as well that esther treating her husband the king with proper reverence and respect would encourage the regular women to treat their husbands with you know honor and respect so you know i really really love the story of esther and i used her uh um what do you call it uh, i don't want to say protocol but um her way of approaching her husband for something she wanted to ask him, I used that outline. You know, I can't think of the right word that I want to use, but basically her plan, you know. So 
if I, I, I want to ask him about something, I would say, <laughs> no, baby. Oh, twice today. My Lord, um, you know, if I have, Bella, honestly, <laughs> if I have found favor in your sight, um, if you're pleased with me, you know, can I talk with you soon? Will you let me know when I can ask you a question that I have? And he'll either say, okay, I'll let you know. Or he'll say, okay, you can ask me right now. So, you know, but I would follow her plan. You know, you give your husband thanks and reverence and appreciation first with a good attitude. Then you ask him whatever it is that you want to ask him. Um, you know, I've made him the dinners and all those types of things. And just yeah, absolutely flatter and butter up your husband. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you should do it even when you don't want something. So, um... And the other part of it is, I have to tell the truth, the other part of it is, this man, can I just be brutally honest? <sighs> mm. When we go in that room, well, it could be anywhere as long as nobody's home, but, you know, when we go in that room, he just... <sighs> I, I, all my other videos are pretty much deleted, but it, it's like a marathon of orgasms. I've had so many orgasms in my life. <laughs> I told him we could like do the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, multiple upon multiple upon multiple orgasms in one setting. Like it's just ridiculous. And I mean, he can whisper in my ear and it's like, uh, you know, so it's, so he, he would just do all kinds of things to me. And I was like, you, you, you're my Lord. Oh my God. You are my King. Whew, you are my master. I mean, he's just so good. Um, and that's, and I teased him a little bit, not really, but I was, I was telling the truth, but I was like, I know that you could please two women like a minimum. But anyway, so, you know, he appreciated all those comments, but you know, I was just like, there's no question. You're amazing. So, um, you know, but him putting it down in the bedroom was, a big part of the fact that I was just like, Shh. <laughs> you're the king, you know, I was like, you're amazing. So, and he enjoys it. He loves it. Um, and you know, he's always expressed to me how grateful he is that he knows this is his kitty. This is his kitty, you know, from the beginning. And, um, you know, it just makes him super happy. That's an understatement. So anyway, um, so basically, you know, between that incredible sexual dominance and the, the desire it, oh God, mercy, get me hot now, um, the desire that it creates in me um, and the way that he lives his life, the you know, his integrity, his honor, he, his hard working ethic, the, the danger that he puts himself in for the community, for you know, our country for our family, you know, it, he so has beyond earned my respect, my honor and my reverence. Um, he's incredible. So, you know, if you guys have heard my story before, he's planned things to be set up so that I don't have to work after he's gone. I don't have to remarry after he's gone for financial reasons. I'm not getting married. I'll be a nun. I'm going to make a, a daddy, uh, um, I don't want to call it a tomb, but <laughs> like, like an honor area for daddy. I don't know what you call that. But anyway, um, there's a word, but I can't quite think of it right now. Anyway, my brain is just shot, but you know, I thought it was important to talk about because he, he's never said, you know, call me your king. Now when we're in the bedroom, he's talking about who's your daddy. That's, <laughs> that's along those lines, you know, of like, you know, who am I? You know what I mean? So that kind of attitude and just, uh, I mean, that's, it's amazing because as hard and tough and, you know, burly, amazing of a man that he is, um, he's also, you know, showing me his very kind and tender side, you know, of course, again, because we've known each other since we're 14, loved each other since we're 14. And, um, Bella, he know he feels he can obviously trust me. He knows that um, I keep his secrets. That I, you know, will just hold him in my bosom, you know, and just whatever you want to tell me, Daddy. 
because um, a man, even the strongest of men, really, it's good for them to have a place where they could just put their head and let it out, talk about whatever, you know, the deepest, darkest things that are bothering them or whatever. Um, that's important. And then he picks right back up and he's stoic and like it never happened. <laughs> uh, but those are some of the things, you know. And again, if you watch uh, Taming with the Shrew, excellent movie with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. My favorite, absolute favorite, Taming the Shrew. And uh, at the end, she's got an epic speech epic and you may have to listen to it a few times to break it down because they talk funny if you can hang in there when it gets started you'll love it it's absolutely fabulous um but you know and she talks about um the wife owes her husband um duty like the subject owes the prince you know um and it's beautiful it's so beautiful and you know he really had to break her basically um and I've watched it with numerous girls, you know, young women at the house, the boys who were talking to or whatever. And a lot of them are like, oh, he's so mean. And I'm like, mm, no, this is the battle of the sexes. And he had to win. Otherwise, nobody would have been happy because if she won, first of all, that's why she was so miserable to begin with. Everybody kowtowed to her demands and they were afraid of her. He was the first one to stand up to her and be like, nah, it ain't going to go down like this, you know? And that reminds me of my husband. He's very much that way. Um, and as much as he loves me, if I disrespected him, if I did something that was like unacceptable, he would leave. He would just leave. He has too much self-respect and pride and ego, you know, and he just has let me know over the years that, nope, he ain't gonna be nobody's biatch, <laughs> you know, and that makes him even more desirable, and, you know, I want him, and I want him to be pleased with me, and, you know, it just makes me so happy, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else, you know, besides for him inspiring me to want to call him those things and you know what amazes me about all these christian women or believers or followers of jesus and even in the indian culture i mentioned that so many of them are actually feminists this feminism has just really brainwashed women from the time they're babies it's terrible and um you know many men don't even feel like they have the right to say anything to their women and you do who is going to go fight the guy who breaks in your house at night? You know, who's ultimately responsible for your family? The man is. So he has the headship. You know, he has the authority to put it down, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Um, as far as the law, you know, maybe a couple smacks on the bum. <laughs> Safe, sane, consensual between two adults, blah, blah, blah. Um... You know, but I think that really helps. I really do. Um, mm, 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 mm. It's a good thing. Um, hmm. <sighs> so the best thing I could say is, you know, you could watch some of those movies. You could read those scriptures together. You could um, read the story of Esther together, um, you know. And send her my videos <laughs> see if she'll watch my videos uh, all I know is that the more that I have put my husband on a pedestal have said you're amazing you're incredible you're phenomenal you're this you're that um, all true things he became even more those things he it's like women are so afraid to feed a man's ego no 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 the more that you feed that ego he's just like yes, I'm going to be even better for you, you know, and he comes home and he just gives you even more and he produces even more. Um, I'm telling you all the love and support and belief that I've given him is why not completely because the man did it on his own, but the support of his wife makes such a difference where he went from 28,000 in the beginning and we shared one car for eight years raised four kids on, you know, the salary that just went up, went up, went up until the last handful of years where it's in the six, you know, six figures. Um, and I'm so proud of him, you know, and, and it's just growing. Um, and 
it's it's just phenomenal. So, you know, Mr. Samuels was so right when he said that if you're young, when you get together with your man, you know, and I say you go through the growing pains because there's going to be growing pains growing up together, but that's okay. And, you know, when you build with him, then he makes all that money. It's like you have such a higher chance um, of having monogamy, of having uh, faithfulness, because he really knows that you're irreplaceable. You have his back. You've loved him when he had nothing. Versus all these women out here of all different ages who just want to show up when the man's already worked his butt off and now he's making six figures. These dogs are so noisy. <laughs> now he really? Goodness gracious. Anyway, um, and you're just going to show up and say, hey, you know, put me in your six figure lifestyle, please. Um, there's going to be a different type of relationship there because basically you're saying I'm here for the money. You know, I'm here for what you can do for me, not your, you know, I've loved you for who you are since the beginning. You know what I mean? So, you know, that, that is important and it's a different type of a relationship and a different type of feeling and bonding that that man's going to have. It's not impossible, but you know, we already know that 80% of women want the top 20% of men. It's crazy. It, it's crazy. And uh, I, I'm telling you, that's why Western society tried to get rid of polygyny, one man marrying more than one woman, because they wanted the other 80% of guys to have a chance to reproduce and have children and have a family. <laughs> For real. But anywho, um, this is probably long enough. And... You know, uh, if you're a woman watching this and you have a man, you have a husband, just try it. You know, I've told you guys before, you got to kind of, women like to daydream anyway, fantasize about seeing your husband as your king. All right. That's the first thing. See him as a king and, and imagine, read Esther. It just helps you put yourself in that position and then just start to call him that. You know, it sounds funny at first because you're not used to it. But the more you say it, the more it grows on you. And then you just mean it from your heart. You know, you're like, yes, Daddy King, Lord Master, absolutely. You are the reason why I have this wonderful life, why I have the freedom that I have. You know, I'm here for my kids, whatever they need. And they do need me even at the ages that they're at. Um, you know, the two younger ones aren't driving their own cars yet. So, you know, I am still playing taxi and I don't mind. I love it. I love it for as long as they need me. So it's a joy, it's a privilege, it's an honor. 27% um, of moms get to be stay-at-home moms. I mean, that's pretty low. That's really sad. Everybody else is working. Um, so I'm super blessed. Anywho, I hope that all the dog chewing and barking <laughs> didn't ruin the video. But I just wanted to give you guys some ideas. Again, it's not something that a man comes out and demands his wife to do it's something that a man inspires his wife to want to treat him that way and to call him those names that's the most honest thing that I could think of and to say uh, kind of like submission you know it's women have a choice um, even though it's godly and it's really commanded you know um, but women have a choice so but what women need to learn is the more that they do right by the way of god again even in the natural without religion if they do right by the laws of nature there it's sowing and reaping you're going to get the benefit of treating him like a king and making him your king what does that make you his queen <laughs> which he asks me all the time and who are you i'm daddy's queen <laughs> I love it. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao.